Hey everyone, today I'm going to be starting a small series of videos covering some basics of modding Remnant. This series will only cover as much as I know about modding, and will expand as I learn more. My goal with these videos will be to help people who wish to mod the game have an easier time getting through all the hurdles I experienced along the way. Before you can do any sort of modding, it's important to make sure you have some of the following. Drive space. The unpackaged game files are going to take up about 57 gigabytes minimum on your PC. This isn't including the additional files you'll need to extract for modification later. Before you commit to modding, be sure you have the storage space and then some. Basic understanding of Blender or any 3D modeling program, as well as Photoshop or any image editing program. For these videos, I'll be using Blender to edit models and Photoshop to edit texture files. I'll be assuming you have some basic understanding of how to use and navigate these tools. There are plenty of tutorials online if you need help working with them. And finally, Sanity. As you work with these tools, you may find yourself having issues maintaining a stable psyche. You have been warned. To mod Remnant, we're going to need a few tools. First is Kai Helios's Asset Editor. This will be used to extract, package, and modify Unreal Asset files. Next is UModel. This is used to revert UAsset textures, models, and sounds into editable raw files. As for audio edits, you can use whatever audio software you have on hand. Audacity works plenty fine. Finally, we'll be needing the right version of Unreal 4 for baking assets. You'll need the Epic Games Launcher for this part. Head over to the Unreal Engine section, click on Library, and then click the little plus to add a new engine version. You'll want to find version 4.22.3. Hit Install and then wait for it to be finished. Next, launch it up. At the top, hit New Project. Make sure to select Blank and disable Stutter Content. Give it a name and create it. Now you have the tools to mod Remnant, more specifically, many Unreal 4 engine games. Now that everything is downloaded and all set, let's unpack the pack files. To find these, you'll want to navigate to your Remnant Packs folder directory. This should be in the same folder as whatever launcher you play the game from. For Steam users, it should be roughly in this directory. Once you are there, I recommend creating a new folder called Remnant. Open up the Asset Editor and navigate to the Packs folder. Select the pack that has a zero in its name. Extract it to the remnant folder we just made. It will take some time. It's extracting about half the assets from the base game. Once it's finished, extract the pack with the one in its name into the content folder within the remnant folder. Make sure to create this folder in your packs directory if you haven't already. Let's grab a gun model and make some small tweaks to it. For my example, I'll be grabbing the repeater pistol. Launch a view model. For the address, grab the link from the remnant folder we've created, paste that in the box. For engine version, select 4, and then for the next box, select 4.22. You'll be presented with a big list of folders. Navigate to the items folder. Go to weapons, human, guns, mesh, and look for player makeshift auto pistol 01. Double click to make sure it's the right model. Then go to the Tools tab and hit Export Current Object. Next, in the Export Options window, make sure the texture format PNG is selected. Also, uncheck the box beneath it so it does not produce DDS files. If you haven't by this point, create a new folder somewhere in your PC. This will be where you store your unbaked files. Separate them by name to make it easier to locate different batches. Remember where you extracted it. Next, we're going to open up Blender. Before we can import that mesh into Blender, we're going to need a plugin to import skeletal meshes. Head over to this GitHub link, which I will link in the description, and download the zip file. Extract the second Python file somewhere easily accessible on your device. Head back into Blender, go to the Edit tab, and go down to Preferences. Go to Add-ons, and hit Install. Find that Python file. Select it, and hit Install. Check that box off, and now you can import the meshes. Next, import the PSK file. Make sure to shade smoothly so it doesn't look blocky when you export it. Then, edit the mesh however you want.
make sure to rename this bit here to armature. If you don't, it'll cause issues with the skeleton and break the weapon. When you're done editing, we'll need to make some adjustments so it imports properly to Unreal 4. Go to the little triangle button here. Go to Units, and make it 0.01. Select the skeleton. Click the little arrow up here. For scale, change all three to 100. The mesh should stretch out with the bones. After that, the model should be way bigger. Still selecting the skeleton, hit Ctrl A to bring up this little menu. Click All Transforms. This trick fixes the issue of Unreal saying the bones are too small to create the physics asset. Now go to File, Export, and choose FBX. Make sure only Armature and Mesh are selected. Set the scale to 0.01. In Geometry, set Smoothing to Face. And in Armature, uncheck Add Leaf Bones. Next, name the Mesh the same as the extracted model. Then Export. Heading back to Unreal, we are going to load up our project and recreate the series of folders needed to house the mesh and its material. Make sure to spell all the folders exactly as they are in the Extracted Remnant folder. Drag the FBX file into the Mesh folder. Uncheck Import Textures if it's checked off. Hit Import All, and if nothing pops up, you'll be all set. I will post a little FAQ in the description with a few troubleshooting questions and answers if you run into any trouble. Check out the Weapon Mesh in the viewport. If it looks really tiny, delete all references to the file and re-import it. Set the import scaling to 100. That should fix the issue. In the Material folder, make sure to have a material named after the one in the files. In the Mesh, set the material to be the one you created. Give it one last look, and make sure all the folder names and locations are correct. In the File tab, go to Package Project. Go to Packaging Settings. Uncheck the Make Pack option. It's going to ask where you want this project to be packaged to. Make a new folder somewhere you can easily reach. Once that's done, head to the folder and grab the content folder. Head back to your pack directory. Make a new folder with your mod's name. Create a folder named Remnant inside of it. Drag and drop the content folder into the Remnant folder you just made. Make sure to go into the folders and delete the material folder. This will cause issues with the lighting on the mesh if left in. Open up Asset Editor, and select Package Folder. Go into that folder you just named after your mod, and select the Remnant folder, and hit Enter. It'll make a new pack file in that location. Place this into your tilde mods folder. Load up the game, and it should boot up just fine. If it crashes, recheck all your pathways and names in Unreal. If you got to the main menu, load in and check out your creation. Your mesh should load in and be working properly. If your gun appears to be missing sounds, textures, and animations, I'd suggest checking your paths again. The same process of importing can be done with textures. Make a texture folder in the same location of the material and mesh ones in your Unreal project. Import the picture, open it up, and change the compression settings to be BC7. Set compression quality to highest, and save the texture so there isn't a little white star next to it. Rinse and repeat, package, grab the texture folder, move it to where the mesh folder is in your created mod folder, package it with asset editor, move it to your mods, making sure to overwrite and delete the old one. Launch up the game, and it should be working properly. And that's how to import custom meshes and textures into Remnant. Once you get the hang of it, it's really fun to make your own stuff. From this video, you can infer a lot of other tricks for getting elements modded. That's it for me for now. As I learn more about modding, I'll make more videos covering the subject. If you have any issues, leave them in the comments, and I'll help you out as best as I can. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.